I am so pleased to introduce my former boss, way back in the day, <laughs> when I had hair. <laughs> That's a joke, you can laugh, it's okay, it's not very serious. All right, so we have Bill Walsh. He is the CEO of Viceroy Hotels and Resorts, and he is speaking on Lodging Leadership 2.0, Prepare to Pivot. All right, Bill, welcome. Let me put that here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good morning. Seriously? People at home did better than that. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. ILHA, thank you very much for having me. It's an honor and a privilege to open this event for you. People in the audience, lovely to meet you. People at home, nice to kind of streamingly meet you. People in the audience, meet the people at home. AKA people wearing pants, meet people, maybe. Anyway, good morning. It is an honor to be here. Um, lodging leadership, prepare to pivot. What do I mean? Well, when I was putting this talk together, one of the things that kept coming to my mind were the impact on leadership in the hospitality industry as a result of things that have happened to us in recent years. And that impact has seen us as leaders move from action to reaction. Historically, we've been able to define and dictate circumstances for the most part. And the journeys that we were on in our businesses, we were in control. Recently, the world has made a habit of getting in the way. And as leaders, we've had to react as opposed to act. What previously was clear has become cloudy. And as leaders, the ability that we have to manage our businesses, our hotel companies, our individual hotels, has meant that we're making split-second decisions, decisions in the minute as a result of what we're faced with. That's what we're going to talk about today. But first and foremost, who am I? Well, I'm not only the guy who once was on a TV show with Patrick, Mark Burnett's only ever failure in reality TV, and we were the two hosts. That's a story for another day. I am the Chief Executive Officer of the Viceroy Hotel Group, which means one thing that is very important. Within my organization, I am that guy. I am the one who has the stupidest job title of anybody. Why? Because when I was thinking about this talk, there was another word that kept coming to my mind, and that was purpose. We are a purpose-driven industry. And I thought about my title, I thought about my position, and you know what, it's pretty high on status, but it's very low on purpose. And when I consider myself and compare myself to some of the folks that I work with, like a restaurant manager, what do they do? They manage a restaurant. A cocktail server, what do they do? They serve cocktails. I'm the chief of the executive, what do I do? I presumably executive chiefly. <laughs> it's utterly meaningless. So I don't want you to think of me as the chief executive officer of the Viceroy Hotel Group, I want you to think of me as I think of me in terms of my purpose, and that is to be the chief pride officer of the company, because as a leader, every one of us in this room, our obligation is to create and curate environments that make people proud. Why pride? Well, I think it builds off the essence that is at the heart of the hotel business, the heart of hospitality. We are a business of human beings who make other human beings happy. It's what we do. I wish I had a more rocket science-y description of what we do, but I actually think we're profound. I think to be a human being with the opportunity and obligation to make other human beings happy is as good as it gets. And one of the ways we do that is by making people feel proud. Pride is also an attribute of people in luxury because proud people strive for excellence. We are allergic to mediocrity. We hate the F word. The four-letter profanity, not that one, fine. We hate words like fine. We prefer fantastic, we prefer fabulous. I did this with an audience one. I said, shout out words that are F words that are so much better than fine. How was your stay? It was fine. No. Give me words. And somebody shouted out fabulous. I said, thank you. Someone else shouted out fantastic. I said, thank you. There was a Gen Z in the audience. They went, phenomenal. One of the ways, they're a phonic generation, according to my kids. One of the ways that we, we pursue this purpose and that we activate um, this excellence 
is through having an ideology. And I'm going to talk about what an ideology is. Let me start about what it isn't. An ideology in hospitality is not a brand positioning statement. It's not a one line written by an ad agency. It is so much more than that. It's a platform upon which the culture of an organization is built. Uh, and I believe that the purpose of an ideology and the pursuit of an ideology is pride. An ideology needs to be fueled by pride, and it needs to be in pursuit of pride. So I have pride, and I have ideology. And I wasn't sure what to do next. And I thought, well, I live in LA. And when we are in LA, and we have two words, and we're not sure what to do, we shove them together, and we create a new word. <laughs> so this is my idea for hospitality, and I call it Prideology. It's about having a cultural roadmap that helps us to activate and, and, and achieve excellence and purpose within our businesses. Prideology.com is a website where you can learn a little bit more if you wish, because I have 20 minutes. I'm the worst opening keynote speaker choice for a short agenda like this, because I have very little time, and I'm really opinionated. There's a lot to say, so I'm going to keep going. Forgive me for the speed. What is a prideology or an ideology? It is a roadmap. Now, in the hotel business, typically we're very good at having roadmaps that speak to all things commercial, all things financial. What's the roadmap we're almost familiar with? A budget. We've all just spent four months working on budgets for 2023. And what other kind of roadmap do we have? Well, when we get to the end of January and we realize that all of the assumptions we made for the budget were completely wrong, we then pivot into a forecast. We have a number of roadmaps, but in the hotel business, I find typically that we're not great when it comes to having cultural roadmaps. Our roadmaps are very robust for all things financial and commercial and not for for cultural, which is why I believe that we need to have an ideology for hospitality. What is our role as leaders? Well, if we have to navigate the roadmap, um, we are the GPSs. We're the satellite navigation systems of our own organizations. And what a sat-nav does is you program in a destination. In our case, ideological, cultural destination, the purpose, the intention of our business. And then we plot a route to get there. And then life does get in the way. And we find ourselves at a junction. We expect it to go straight. We end up having to go left. And what do we do at that point? We recalculate. We change the route that we're on, but we never change the destination. So, so far, ladies and gentlemen, you have become chief pride officers, irrespective of your job title, and now you're a GPS. And I'm not done with you yet. You'll be more stuff by the time I'm finished. And you've got to plot your path to your destination. This is an example of Viceroy's ideology. It's a series of challenge and commitment statements um, to, to guide us on our path. Now, for those of you that are surreptitiously reaching for your phones and saying, oh, can I take a picture of this? How do I airbrush out the word Viceroy at the end? <laughs> I've done a version without it. <laughs> because this isn't just Viceroy's ideology. This is something that I have learned from great leaders and mentors that I have worked with over the years. It's about being thoughtful in the detail. It's about creating sensation, inspiration, being courageous, being unabashed provocateurs, creating wealth and creating pride in the organization. Now, when I do orientation in my company, we do 90 minutes just on this slide. I could do that this morning, but I won't. And at some point, I'd love to have an opportunity to dig into it, into it a little bit more with you. But I just wanted to create an example. Now, if you are finding it difficult to point your phone at this version that doesn't have Viceroy on it, I've made it even easier. <laughs> Grab the QR code. It's going to take you to a landing page. Because you know what? My ideology is our ideology is everyone's ideology. Take from it what you will. Leave behind what you wish. Use it, don't use it. It's entirely up to you. So if that's the ideology, where does the pivot come in? Well, I think it's fair to say that the last few years have been amongst the most eventful uh, for us in hospitality in the hotel business. We were on a path. We were heading towards our commercial and financial goals. We were heading towards our purpose and ideological goals. And then we had a global pandemic. We've lived through some profound moments, social movement within this country and this world, all of which has also led to a degree of polarization, arguably, that we haven't seen before. People don't only differ in opinion, they do so aggressively and violently. And that has created an atmosphere within which we 
are delivering luxury hospitality experiences, then it has changed the route to delivering those, which is where the inner GPS needs to kick in to make sure that in this new environment, the destination does not change. The interpretation, the activation, the manner in which we deliver our ideological goals for hospitality has to change. I'll give you one very quick example. Um, be thoughtful in the, in the detail. One of the things that, that we focus on a lot in luxury, as you know, everybody in this room does, is individuality. Uh, we, have, we do great partnerships. Uh, Pre-pandemic, I used to do partnerships with um, LVMH, with Maserati, um, with IWC watches. They were all like cool partnerships. My favorite partnership of the last three years, I did a partnership with Molecule, air filters because I wanted my guests to see during pandemic that we actually gave a damn about them, that we wanted to keep them safe. So we found the best air filter supplier that we could, and we put them in the lobbies, the bars, and the restaurants. I stayed faithful to the ideological goal of showing my guests that I would be thoughtful in the detail, but the way I interpret it because of the pandemic circumstances changed entirely. So don't be afraid to pivot in the moment to still deliver what you think is right, but the manner in which you deliver it will change. Right, that's part one of the talk. As I then head into 2023, thinking about the consistent delivery of ideology, what are the influences that I think are going to affect it, and what are some of the questions I think uh, we need to ask? Very quickly, here's just a few. Uh, I'm asking myself, what are guests seeking as we head into 2023? There are two words we've been using consistently in luxury hotel business, luxury hospitality for the last few years, and they are authenticity and individuality. I think they need to be joined by a third, um, and for me, that word is sanctuary. I think as a result of everything that has happened in the world in recent times, sanctuary for many people is in fact the new definition of luxury. And by sanctuary, I mean an opportunity to come to our hotels for emotional input as well as luxury input. I think our guests don't want to come to be served to, they want to come to be cared for. They're living in destinations where they're worried about a home invasion in the middle of the night. Will my car still be there in the morning? Do I have a job to go to? And they want to disconnect and, and have a, a very, very meaningful experience with us. So in the way that we articulate the vocabulary that we use, the content that we share, the images that we shoot, I think we have to demonstrate a lot more about caring human beings who make other human beings happy, less about thread count, less about deep hull carpets, less about gilt frames around hunting scenes over the fireplace. It's got to be much more emotional. Um, one of my heroes, Danny Meyer, put this better than I ever could, because ultimately what we're talking about is making sure that hospitality is present in what we deliver. Danny once said, I'm paraphrasing here, he said, service is present when something happens to you, it becomes hospitality when that act happens for you. The difference between something happening to you and for you is the evidence that whoever is delivering that service cares. So let's show that we give a damn. Let's wear our hearts on our sleeves. Other questions I think we need to ask, are we CCGGDB? CC, charging confidently. We are, and I think we should continue to do so in 2023. The opportunity to continue to push average rate is very much there. In many cases, average rates are better than pre-pandemic. Clearly, from a sanctuary-driven point of view, the closer you are to an ocean or a mountain, the more you can charge. And I think we are a demand-driven business, and we should not feel guilty about charging high rates. That said, if we are CC, charging confidently, we have to GG, which is give generously. Hoteliers in the room, people streaming, folks in our industry that are not even watching or listening, I would just say this. If the rates that you're charging are higher than they were or as they were pre-pandemic, but you are deliberately not reintroducing luxury services into your guest experience that you took out because of the pandemic, and now you've realized how much money you saved, so you're trying not to put them back in, rates better than pre-pandemic, experience less than pre-pandemic, three words, shame, on you. Give generously, random acts of kindness. Let's make our guests understand that we love them and that we value them. And then the DB, deliver brilliantly. There's too much choice out there. And the tolerance for mediocrity that we talked about earlier in Pride, the guest 
doesn't have tolerance for mediocrity. So if we don't, if they feel they're being gouged because we're not giving generously, if we're not delivering brilliantly, they exit the building and they do not come back. Evidence our social consciousness. I think there's a guest out there and, and the future guest are what we call looking for contribution without compromise. Guests want to make the world a better place and they want to do that in an infinity pool, sipping a mojito. <laughs> and the way that they will do that is they will spend their dollars with brands that have the courage to evidence their social consciousness. Another question I think we need to ask, and this is the question to ask, by the way, not where did they go, not why did they go, but why won't they come back? And here I'm talking about colleagues. I'm talking about a, an entire generation of frontline, of staff in our industry. Ladies and gentlemen, here's my question to all of us. We're so proud of the hotels and resorts that we operate. We, we're luxury. We give folks the opportunity to work in beautiful, individual, authentic, luxury environments. And they won't come back. So if they're telling us that they would rather pack goods into boxes for Amazon in a warehouse rather than come back to work for us after the pandemic, whose fault is that? We blame them for being an entitled generation who have just gone away. I think we need to look in the mirror. We need to say, ideologically, are we activating purpose across our organizations? Are we showing these folks that there is a career, that we care, that we're ethical, that we have integrity? And maybe it's not them, maybe it's us, why they won't come back. Finally, um, do I belong here? I think is arguably the most important question, both for guests and for colleagues as we head into 2023 in the hotel business. Now, what do I mean by belonging? Well, the clear area that we're focusing on as an industry is DEI. And in the hospitality industry, we haven't been great. We're getting a lot better, but we haven't been great. At Viceroy, we have a movement. Now, every movement starts with a moment, and I'd like to introduce you to our moment. Now, her name is Beryl. Beryl is the front office manager at the Hotel Zena in Washington, D.C. Now, I met Beryl about three years ago, maybe four, when I went to D.C. because we were taking over management of that particular hotel. And I, I met the staff that were working there, and I said, hey, I'm Bill, and welcome to Viceroy, and we're cool. And I showed them some videos and pictures, and I said, isn't that amazing? And Beryl is the most courageous human being I've ever met in hospitality, and she put her hand up. She was a receptionist at the time. And she said, hey, Bill, I'm Beryl. I went, hey, Beryl. And she said, those videos and pictures are super cool. I said, thank you. And she said, I have a question. I said, what is your question, Beryl? She said, where was I? Three words changed my life. Where was I? Immediately afterwards, I picked up the phone to Kelly Kang, who Patrick knows, she's head of brand for our company. I said, Kelly, I'm giving you 12 months to get out there and to reshoot every video and photography asset in our entire portfolio to make sure that we are reflecting, celebrating and embracing the glorious diversity of our colleagues and our customers. And that led to the creation of a program called Viceroy for Everyone. Now, if you're going to change your organization from a DEI point of view, it's not just about having a logo, it's not just having a phrase, it's about having the commitment and having the courage to tackle it in every single aspect of your business. And you know what? It's a race. It's a race for improvement in DEI, but in this particular race, there is no finish line. You have to have the courage to stand up and talk about what you believe in, which in luxury we haven't been great at doing. So you know what? It's a lot more than hashtag Black Lives Matter. It's about supporting causes. It's about standing up saying LGBTQ plus travel is very important to us and we're going to get better at interacting with that community. We do believe that Black Lives Matter. We are going to support Black History Month. We're going to support Women's History Month. And if there are some people who, as a result of the position that you take, say, whoa, you're woke. I'm not going to come to your hotel. If you're not going to come to my hotel because I believe in stuff like this, I ain't going to miss you. All right? Stay at home. So get out there. And, and share your vision. I have one slide left. I know I'm going to take questions. I'm going to be maybe 30 seconds over. I do apologize. Um, but I asked my colleagues, what do you think of Viceroy's ideology? I sent a cameraman out. I had no director. I had no script. This is what they said. 
the line from our ideology that resonates the most with me. Mine is very easy. It's very natural to who I am. We are hosts. We are hosts. And we are hosts. First and always, yes. We are feeling special, so when we see somebody, we just make that person feel special as well. I think that every guest that walks through our doors deserves to feel pampered. We are the victors. We are the spoils. Uh, it's really an important line because it's so fun to celebrate all the successes and victors that we have. We make people expect the remarkable and that's something that I've felt like I've really got to connect with, with my guests. Um, my, my favorite ideology. My favorite ideology. The very, my favorite one, we dare to say yes. And others dare not. Um, that one sticks mostly to me. Decimos sí cuando los demás no se atreven. So, so many people are so quick to just say no and don't try. We don't. It's all about creating wealth. Somebody once told me that, you know, you have to pass the ladder for the next person to climb up because somebody gave me the opportunity to, to climb up. Uh, so it's all about giving and creating that opportunities for our, our colleagues. Con la que me gusta mucho es la de aceptamos lo imposible. We embrace the impossible. Cuando nos dicen vas a tener 80 llegadas con una reapertura y corre todo el mundo y es lo más emocionante. Lo... Taking something remarkable, you can make it possible. Y lo mejor que el huésped con la sonrisa. My favorite line from the ideology is we are advisory because it includes everyone. I think the diversity and it includes our personalities coming all together as one. Well. Me encanta todo Viceroy. Me gusta mi trabajo, me gusta la gente con quien trabajo. I am love, I am peace, I am proud African American. I am Lithuanian. Filipina. I am unique, I am happy, I'm Mexican. I'm gay, I'm Hispanic. Wife, mother, I am spicy. So gay and queer, I am passionate. I am a black American, I am a gay male. Uh, I'm a son, I'm a brother. I am Viceroy. I am Viceroy. I am Viceroy. Soy Viceroy. And we are Viceroy. We are Viceroy. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you to my colleagues who participated. They're so courageous. I love every one of them. I apologize for going slightly over. Thank you for the energy in this room, which has been spectacular this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bill Walsh. I am the Chief Pride Officer of Viceroy, and I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed being here. Have a great event. Thank you. Thank you.